Do you all remember the original Animal Crossing? While being an N64 game originally, it doesn't have the greatest amount of detail, but what it lacks in graphical fidelity, it makes up for an art style. Every part of that game is a joy to look at. The poppy colors, the oddly complex textures, the deformed character models. That world is just so packed to the brim with interesting things that I just want to spend as much time in it as possible, just to see all that it has to offer. So why, almost 20 years later, does the new Animal Crossing look so bland and cheap looking? First of all, it has that sheen over all the textures that most first party Switch games have. The only thing that this sheen does is make it look like they're covering up for lack of detail in the graphics. But the game does have detail in spades. Things like the water and grass look pretty much one to one with their real life counterparts. But that is exactly the problem. There are no creative liberties in the transition from life to game. It's just a straight copy and paste. In the original, the water has a layered texture on top of it, giving the impression that the water is deeper and reflects more sunshine than real water. But without this in New Horizons, it just looks like normal water and it makes it obvious that it's two feet deep and doesn't even cover that much of the map. Even the little triangles on the grass are so subdued that they're barely noticeable. It's mostly just regular grass. Without any real difference to real life in any of the environment, your brain just tunes out most of what you're looking at as crap it has seen a million times before. So while there's technically more detail in how realistic everything is, because there's no meaningful details, the whole game feels boring. Now, to be fair, the original does have some straight one-to-one -one realistic elements in the furniture. In that game, the charm of the furniture is how it contrasts with the cartoony elements. And New Horizons does do this to some extent, thanks to the character design, which is still poppy and cartoony. But the added realism of the rest of the world in New Horizons lessens its impact. Instead of having these real items in a silly cartoon world, it just comes off as silly cartoon characters invading a real place. This changes the feeling of the entire game, making living in your world boring, which for a life simulation game is a big problem. The worst part about this realism approach is that it does work in some places. The inside of some buildings are so crammed with detail that they immediately start to spark the imagination. Like the one little room in the back of Nook's Cranny that you can imagine Timmy and Tommy hanging out during their free time. Places like this still attempt to mimic their real life counterpart, but just a more detailed and interesting version of it. A prime example of this is in the museum. In the previous games, the museum was just a glorified model showcase laid out in uninspired grids. But in New Horizons, there's a ton of variety in how your collection is displayed. There's a place where you can compare your height to dinosaur skeletons, a butterfly dome, and even a shark tunnel. This all makes the museum a place you actually want to explore and spend a lot of time in. This feeling feeds back into the gameplay too, because looking at all the detail that's already there just makes you want to fill it up to see it completed in all of its glory. However, this all disappears the second you step back outside and are brought right back to flat greens and blues. I'm aware that the entire point of the outside area is that you're meant to put in your own detail because the game gives you an insane amount of options to customize your island. But no matter how much crap you cram into your island, with the grid limitation and the preset furniture, there's no way that you can get as much detail into your world as there is in a single room in the museum. It also doesn't help that you're still stuck looking at the same bland water and grass textures everywhere. Outside of the customization options, the game itself is seemingly lacking in content. There's hardly any buildings to make, you hear the same two songs all the time, and the island tour is almost nothing compared to New Leaf. And if you thought multiplayer could save you, there's absolutely nothing to do in multiplayer. The feature restricts you so much that the only thing you can do is wander around and fish. They also seem to add a ton of extra busy work, like the new collectible rock and wood items. These require tools to collect, but the tools break now, so in the middle of collecting them, you have to stop and go collect different stuff, then find a place where you can make new tools so you can get back to what you were doing. All of this wastes your time and feels like they were just padding out the game to hide the lack of original content. Some of this lack of content could be fixed in future updates, but there's no guarantee that will happen, and until then, it just feels like an early access game. But despite all the problems that get in the way of the experience, I still enjoy the game and what it adds to the series. Outside of the tools, the crafting system in general is a great idea. Being able to decide if you want to sell all the fruit you just collected or make a cool little table out of it is a decision that gives all of this collecting an interesting amount of depth. There's also the new Nook Miles achievement system, which gives the player plenty of goals to work for in building up their town. So when I see I only need a few more fish for more miles, it's hard not to because I want to fill up the museum anyway and I can sell the extras. Both of these work well together in constantly providing things to do and keeping the player engaged. At its core, New Horizons is still a fun Animal Crossing game. Boring graphics doesn't make fishing any less fun, and lack of content doesn't mean what's there is bad. It's just disappointing to think that with a bit more creative effort, this game could have been so much more unique and memorable. Between this and the new Pokemon selling well, despite all the controversy, 
I only hope that Nintendo doesn't get complacent with the Switch's massive audience and continue pushing the envelope on how unfinished they can release a game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, check out some of my other videos, and make sure to subscribe to check out what I make in the future, including more media analysis, podcasts, and whatever other creations I can cook up. But in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!